Hi, I'm Pat Danneberg, Director of Field Services for Montana Council, and just wanted to welcome you today. And with me, I have Tina. Tina, introduce yourself real quick. Hi, I'm Tina O'Donnell. I'm the District Chair for Mountain Valley District in um, Belgrade, Montana. And Tina, we're here today to talk about the finance workbook that any of our activities across the council can use. Really and truly, we're, we're asking each district and the events that we as a council do use this workbook, uh, the finances, the budgets, the ability to submit for purchase orders and check requests and get your money paid back. All of that stuff is in here. We really won't go through the procedures, right? Um, that'll be a separate video, but um, Tina, if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and start sharing the screen and, okay. and tell us about this workbook that we've got. All right. So this is an Excel file that we will share out with everyone, um, all of the district chairs, and then they can disseminate this out to their um, to their their activity chairs that are running their district activities. So that's the intent on here. It's also intended to use for Montana Council activities like NYLT or Wood Badge or Commissioner's College, anything like that. Um, so what I've done is I have one workbook and then it has multiple worksheets you can see down here on the bottom and we'll just real briefly go through this and with a sample that I've I've got ready to go um, and just kind of talk about it. So when you open up the workbook um, in Excel, you'll see the first tab is the instructions. And this kind of tells you, you know, how to navigate in through it. It also talks about each tab of the document. So we have all that there. I'm not going to go through it line by line, but I'll pretty much hit on these items as we go through each tab or worksheet. So let's go ahead and get started. So um, we recommend that you save this activity workbook uh, in your council provided Google Drive, and then you can send the link out to people who are working on the activity with you. You can also uh, save, share that with your district executive or your council staff advisor if, if you're working with one of those on a council activity. The workbook does use formulas to populate cells in other worksheets so that you don't have to enter the information over and over. And basically how it's set up is you kind of start from the left activity registration and you work through all the tabs there. Um, and um, please only edit the main or do not edit the main cells of the template. You'll see when we go into one that there's some gray highlighted cells that you can edit. And those uh, um, I have it locked down on Excel just so that it's real easy for non Excel users to use. Um, however, if you do open this in Google Docs, it doesn't necessarily protect any of the cells on there. So you can type anywhere. So um, I'll show you kind of demonstrate that in here when I'm speaking about. But if you need any assistance, you can go Go ahead and email me and I'll get to you as soon as I can. I do have an eight to five job, so I'm not necessarily able to respond right away, but I will try to help you out. So we're just going to click on our first tab down here at the bottom. It's the activity registration. Um, we've combined all of the district and council activities um, into one. So if we click on this drop down box, it's, uh, we just need to select our district or our council. So I'm just going to pick um, Mountain Valley District, because that's where I'm located at. And then the next thing we're going to do is select the district activity project code. These are listed alph alphabetically by district. So I kind of just put some um, little uh, uh, acronyms in, into some of these because the names were kind of long, like MTC for Montana Council. So um, and these project codes are what helps uh, the accounting department at Montana Council to identify um, which uh, activity is being ran and it, everything can be allocated to that. So I'm going to say this is a camporee. So my activity project code is 212. So I click on that and I'm ready to go. Um, this is important and the district executives will review this information and make sure it's selected. But if you can see, I have populated this to where when I go on the subsequent tabs, you can see up at the top there that it puts Mountain Valley District and then the 212 um, project code in there. 
So on here, I'm not going to type in everything. We're just going to high level. But the purpose of this activity. Hey, Tina, is, real quick. Yeah. So just to clarify, also with that uh, drop down where you selected Mountain Valley District, if there's another activity in there that doesn't show up in the list, we can reach out to you. People can reach out to me. Um, we can get that that project code and district um, lined up in there so that they can still have access and use this workbook just in case we uh, missed one or something like that. Yep, perfect. Or if things change, um, you rename yours. We recently in Mountain Valley District kind of uh, changed some some names and things on on it. So yep, totally, we can do that. All right, so like I said, this um, activity registration, the purpose of this is to gather all the information for the activity. And then so you can send this information up to council and they can get the activity created in uh, scoutingevents.com, which is also known as Black Pug. That's the software behind it. And um, so you just basically type information in in the gray cells here. We've listed out most everything in here you will need. You may not need all these fields, but um, we've tried to list pretty much everything possible on here. So enter as much as you can on here. And the purpose is to give council enough information and your district activity person chair to, to get, provide enough information so there's not the back and forth uh, um, emails that you know what well what's the cost what's the date what's the amount you know all that kind of stuff so so that's kind of what we're going for here so i'm just gonna type in a, a little bit of information and as you can see i'm typing in the light gray um here uh the, those fields and if i try to click in one of these fields over here these are are protected and you can of course unprotect them if you're familiar with excel but otherwise you would just stick in the in the gray cells we don't want you to edit too much of this information but we do um acknowledge that you know there are some changes that need to be made too um i'm going to go ahead and just type in a quick phone number oops odon.com who is your event staff advisor so every event should have a staff advisor it might be your district executive um renee stevens for mine and um or it might be someone at council if it's a council activity activity name we're gonna say actually we're gonna say spring campery you list out a short description including what to wear where it's at your theme you know that kind of stuff we're just gonna say is chopped um, food program. I can't think of anything right now for that um, there, but um, where it's going to be located, um, we'll just put it over at the property there, and what your start date is, and your end date. And you can go on through times, um, the time here, just um, tabbing through most of these or arrowing up or down will get you to, through them. And some of these I have drop down boxes. So you can see when I clicked in here, there's a drop down box. So I can select um, Scouts BSA. I can also come over here. It's a gray box and I can select Venture Scouts um, on there. You can select other things like this is a camporee and then just kind of go on and on down through here. Um, again, I'm not going to fill in everything, but you can see um, it helps us to gather the fee amounts, if the unit will register or will the individual scouts and their families register. Um, there is a late fee that we are going to apply to all uh, um, district events that would apply if they uh, register within one week prior to the activity and this fee will cover the you know like the five to ten dollars for patches or extra program supplies or or stuff like that uh, pat's going to go over that more in the procedures but that is on here and you could enter in what that is um, there is a cancellation fee that, that Pat will talk about, and we've put the generic cancellation fee in here, um, or the standard, not generic, excuse me, the standard ex, uh, cancellation policy that you can um, review on there. Um, you know, if they require waiver or medical forms required and just so on. We did add a spot down here for additional notes in case you have any other information you need to include. So once so you Tina, fill this out, oops, sorry, yeah. So Tina, really and truly, somebody, the intent of this sheet is for us to be able to ask the questions for that, that activity or event planner 
and be able to sit down and say, all right, I give you all this information and it goes to the scout office. They should be able to get it on the website and on the calendar and have all the questions asked and answered so that we can populate it for any leader wanting to register for that, for that activity, right? Yes, exactly. And it just sure helps with the back and forth. Um, we, we've used it for several activities and it really, when it's used, it does really help. Yeah, it should be able to uh, speed up the process of if you fill this out and answer all the questions, it really helps in being able to not delay the process of posting something because we asked all the questions on the first time. Yep, exactly. Yeah, so once you've get, got all this information in there, you can send the link to your or tell your district executive that, hey, it's in the shared drive, and they can log in and they can review all the information and approve, approve your um, posting. You also want to include any supporting information like flyers or photos, anything like that. Yep. So that's our registration. That's where it kind of starts with. Um, the next one uh, tab we have here is the activity checklist, and this is, um, as you can see, the activity date is here. Um, so this is when our, our campery is going to be, and what it what this um, checklist is doing is it's just listing some of the main uh, items that you need to complete to run a, a, a district event, including, you know, meeting with your, your district chair and your, your budget process and the end cap and, and so on and so on there. So what it does is it has mathematical formulas that you can, um, that go off of your activity date, which you populated on your registration, and then it figures out the due date. So by March 20th, we should have worked with our end cap team. Um, um, by March 20th is pretty much when we do most of these. If you do want to change these dates, you can simply right click over this activity checklist and select unprotect sheet. And let's say that NCAP doesn't, we need to work with them. It's more complicated and we need to work with them for 90 days out. So I'm just typing in minus 90 and then it changes that date that's a formula you can see up here. It changes that formula to where it'll it'll tell you when 90 days is. So then right click again and just protect the sheet and just say OK. And so then you can't enter back into there. Um, so when you've got these items complete, you can just say um, type in the date that it was completed um, or whatnot. If you have some other act, um, activities or tasks that need to be completed, you can enter them in these light gray here. So we could type in contact um, forest service. And we need to do that. Oh, I had a type in forest service. And 45 days out, we just enter in minus 45. It'll do the math for us. And there we go. Then we can see down here on activity day is May 19th. And then Within 14 days of the activity, we need to close out each activity, um, including the submitting for reimbursement requests, completing the expense and income forms, send out any thank you cards, just get it all wrapped up within 14 days. Here's some additional task lines that you can enter in. All right, so the next one that we have, so this is helping you out with the budget. So. The previous year, your district committee should have come up with a activity, um, a budget for your district, including each activity would have its own income and expenses. Um, one of the great things about this workbook will be the, the next step. So, so this fall, um, we will be able to use the information contained inside these workbooks and easily come up with your district's uh, expense or excuse me, budget. And we did this last year and in, um, in Mountain Valley, and it was great. We had all of the activity workbooks. I think I, it took us about two hours to come up with it rather than before, it was forever. So this is what I'm really excited about. And we'll do a separate training on that, what we can, what we can do there. Um, but this just gets you going. So if you take that information that's contained in your budget for this activity, so uh, Mountain Valley Dam, District Camperee. Um, we have uh, budgeted for patches. So we're just going to type in patches. 
And that's a program expense. You can see that here. Well, you type in an, an ex description there. And over here in this column, you can see my drop down. And you select the expense account number. So I pre populated um, all of the applicable expense account numbers for program. So we're going to select it's just program, pretty, or actually, patches, excuse me, is recognition for youth. And then we can enter in how much we budgeted for that. So we budgeted $100 um, last fall for this activity. Then we have our porta potties. I always have to have those for camperees. And we can click that this down because that's related to our facilities. And here's supplies janitorial number 8105. And we budgeted $150. I'm just gonna do a couple of these. So we had, um, let's see, camp, it's not campfire, it's Cracker Barrel, there we go. And we can again see what we have for food and we have food related and that one's there. And then um, we have a, oh, program. So then we have program. So we just have program supplies. We're just keeping it generic right now. We can come back in and change that later when we know exactly what we have. And so our program supplies for this, um, we're just going to click pick supplies program and it's $600. So our district's budget says $950 for this activity. And we have that filled in. That's great. It does the math for you. So it takes each of these sections and puts it in your budgeted expenses. And Tina, just to clarify too, I think what you really tried to do is in the uh, expense account number column, you really tried to highlight and use the most common ones. Granted, I think there's a few that might on a rare occasion for some of our, our different, more unique events might have something different there, you know? And and once again, get with you or me or your staff advisor and, and work on getting that special number, so. Yep, exactly. Thanks for pointing that out. All right. So next part of our, our, our setup process is we need to budget for our um, income and make sure that we're charging enough um, for this activity because, of course, every activity needs to have a positive value on it. So um, we need to not be in the red. So we are bud we budgeted last fall. We budgeted for um, charging $10. We've always charged $10 for this, and we think 50 scouts will come. Um, we also have um, for uh, leader activities, or I'm sorry, leader activity fee, we charge them $10 also, and we think we'll have 20 of those. So our income right now is $700. So if you remember back over here, our expenses were $950 we need to increase our activity fee to cover that $950. So again, we can either hopefully get more scouts there. So let's say, you know, it's a good year. Maybe, you know, we thought we'd get 50, but maybe we get 60. Well, that's still not enough. So we're going to have to increase our fee. So we're going to increase our fee, let's just say to $15, just to keep it, um, just to keep it, uh, you know, even numbers here. So simply by just changing those amounts, I can see what my income is going to be on here. It's $1,200 and my budget expenses is $950. So now I'm at a positive number. So we're, we're hoping with the formulas that will help you to figure out and make sure you're able to charge enough. Um, I'll, I'll uh, just to drive that home, um, we have this activity profit loss summary. And so on this spreadsheet, it takes those numbers again and it puts them on here. Um, here's our total income that we have for that um, activity, as well as our expenses here. Um, we have implemented, actually, it's kind of always been around, but um, we're just making it more formal that there's an administrative fee of 10%. And this administrative fee um, helps cover the software, also any printing, any marketing, any geofencing, any of that kind of information um, that we, we use and, and council resources that we use on that. So, so that's that um, amount there. And it's just 10% off the income. And then also um, the contingency fee, we do, um, this 5% fee is another fee that we've always had. And that is to cover any increase in costs 
since you budgeted for it. Um, an example of that <laughs> doesn't five percent doesn't cover it, but porta potties in the Gallatin Valley um, prior to the big uh, construction boom, they they were pretty reasonable. And then when they just there just wasn't the supply, the cost went through the roof. Obviously, sixty bucks wouldn't cost or help us there, but um, anyway, just just as an example of what we're we're doing there. Um, you can also on here see all of the other budgeted expenses all here in this this category. So this is just kind of a nice way to, you know, meet with your district executive or staff advisor and kind of go over the budget and make sure that you're charging enough. And like I said, you can just easily, um, whoops, on the income, you can easily bump that up to see um, if you're covering enough. Um, so after the activity, I'm just going to continue on with this because this is pretty much um, where we're at here. So after the activity, you'll come back into your workbook and you'll add in the actual expenses. So our uh, patches were actually 125. Now, thankfully, we had that 5% contingency fee in there that will help us out in that area. Our food down here was actually 75. Oh, we're doing good. This is good. Um, our part of potties, here we go. We were $50 over budget on those. And our program, we had budgeted 600 and we um, had $550 in program expenses. So we actually, with the adjustments made, we actually stayed on budget here. So 950 um, was our budgeted amount and we stayed on budget for actual expenses. So uh, um, what this does again is come over to our, um, our profit and loss summary and we can see because we've only entered in our expenses, then, then um, uh, it just only shows that amount. So if we go to our activity income, so this was our budget estimation section here. Um, and then down here in the activity actuals is where we're gonna actually, you know, how many scouts did we have come? We had 52 scouts come and we had 23 adults come. So when we plug in those numbers, um, we uh, our actual income was 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 um, eleven hundred twenty five dollars, and we had budgeted twelve hundred. So it's a good thing that we had increased the cost a little bit because our numbers were were basically down from what we had budgeted on there. If you were to sell any um, like a trading post items, you could put those here, but just note that those uh, values are not included up in the totals up here. But in case you wanted to put widgets down or whatever, you could say how much you sold um, on there. Also on here, I included um, unit number. You can type in the unit and how many scouts and leaders um, attended. If you'd like, this again does not include up in the totals, but it's just something to help you. Like for the next year, um, you can look back and say, oh, 636 didn't come. I wonder why, you know, maybe we should reach out to them and tell them how great of an event this is. So I'm just going to come back over to our profit loss again, and you can see by entering in our budgeted and our actuals now, we made $6.25 off of this activity. Um, so uh, again, good thing we, we took a look at it and we increased that fee a little bit and, and so that this activity wasn't um, in the red. The last part I'll just talk about the income is um, we we are owed money, $1,125 for this from the units that came. And um, by using scoutingevents.com, uh, we'll talk more about it in the procedures, but the money goes directly to the council. And so then you can use the reports in scouting events and you can find out how much um, uh, was was received up at council. So like, let's say at the event, you uh, received $125 in a check from one and council had uh, collected $1,000 through scouting events. So there's our um, $1,125. And we um, can see that we're all closed out. We don't owe any more money and money's up at council. And then this $125 we collected will be deposited into a, a, a council account here in Bozeman. Anything to add on that, Pat? No, I think the, the big thing is, is, you know, if you, um, well, scroll down on the sheet some, Tina. This one? Yeah. Oh. So, I mean, when you start looking at um, other sources of income, 
you know, your trading post, if it's a day camp and you're running a, you know, a, a little trading post there and you're selling snow cones or candy bars or leather things or whatever, you know, you can start to include some of that and start to figure out some of your budget stuff in this. So the other thing too, to consider is, you know, um, I'm one of those, like, I don't necessarily always think we have to charge the same amount for, for our adults, right? So if we've got an adult attending the activity, we can charge them less, maybe just enough to cover the cost for them attending, um, you know, and then build the rest of the program needs into uh, the cost for our scouts to attend. So, uh, but just a couple of thoughts there, nothing big. Great points. All right, so our uh, next tab is really important as we have all learned and we take uh, leadership courses about uh, kind of like start, stop, continue. Um, but the activity summary, um, this is just a way to recap everything that happened high level, not super detailed, but things to, that you can turn over to the person next year. So let's say you, um, everybody that ever led an activity for a campery has moved away and you have some new uh, leaders who are willing to help out. Well, this is something you can give them and say, hey, here's the activity summary from last year. And, and this is what we did. We have a description of it. We also include, you know, positions like, um, you know, who, who transported the, the porta potties. I always use the porta potties because they're always so important but um, we can we can put down you know the name and who what unit they're with emails you know all of that um there's also uh what you should put in here is like contacts with the forestry service who have you talked to in the past with like the avalanche center or or what have you so you can put all that information into one location here um, job descriptions you know uh the you know you got things like ordering patches uh there who who designs the patches who uh, um, coordinates the porta potties who goes shopping for a cracker barrel things like that um, these are all you know pretty simple little things but it's good to capture those because you could be a month out and say oh no we haven't looked at patches yet so really important to capture all those you can again unprotect the cell or the, the sheet and then insert in a, um, a line and it'll put it in there. Of course, there's an extra a few lines so you can format that. But if you need more spaces, you can do that. And then just go back and protect the sheet so extra information isn't edited. Oh, here's some more co contacts. So this is like this, the avalanche or the forestry service, excuse me, you can put it down here, either place. You know, equipment, where's it stored? What do you need? What does, uh, you know, where's all of our, our district tent and our, our stove and all that kind of stuff. Also, this is where the start, stop, continue comes in. What are the lessons learned? Um, uh, one, one activity I'm working with, the leader said that, you know, we really do need to increase that, that, uh, fee to $25 next year. So so things like that the, uh, to make sure that we're covering that and remembering it because who can remember everything, you know, year after year on this. And this is just a really good tool to set up a new leader taking on this activity um, with success on there. So very important to use this. Tina, this is a great place where if you're if you're going to a location and you had to reserve a location, um, you know, there's the person that we interact with and pay the fee with and so forth. And sometimes that's some person in a, an office that we never see. But then there's an on-site person that we interact with. And it's always great to make sure that we leave that, that contact behind for the next person. Uh, because I've seen it many a times. You know, you show up and you're like, all right, who do I contact for this thing, you know? And sometimes the, the person on-site is the, the one that actually controls the approval of times and, and dates and so forth where we do things for services so much like that. So just um, any contacts and, um, you know, also if, if there's something that went really well at the activity, leave it on here. If there's something that didn't go so well, leave it on here. If, if you are talking to somebody and next year the, the same location is going to be available, but only available on the other side of the park. And because the part you're using this year is going to be under construction next year, you know, those are helpful things, but that's, this is where you can put that stuff. Uh, yep. So 
it, it really important page to fill out for people to, to save time the following year uh, by by just doing five minutes of notes. Yeah, totally, totally agree. So we just got two more tabs here that we'll kind of go through um, that are equally as important. Uh, this next one is a reimbursement request form. So when you've wrapped it all up and you, of course you want to get paid. So we're going to um, enter in who requested it. So Tina requested it and the date is 1-26-2023. If I was sending this reimbursement request uh, in the form of a purchase order, I might put in like date needed by, you know, January 1st, if we're supposed to pay it, um, you know, 60 days ahead of time or something like that on there. So that's when you would probably use that field. Um, so you, what we need is, uh, if you're asking for reimbursement, you complete this form, and then you oh, got a little typo there, have to fix. But um, then, when you are um, have all your receipts, you must have receipts to accompany this form. You can send it to your district executive or the uh, staff advisor you're working with, and they can go ahead and, and sign off on that if they approve it. And then they'll also get uh, Pat, the District of Field Service signature here, will get a PO request or PO number assigned, and then we'll get that sent out to you um, quickly as possible. So I'm just going to enter in one here, and we're going to do a check. And it's going to go to Tina O'Donnell Belgrade. We'll just keep that for right now. Um, if I was working and there was a corresponding vendor invoice number, you could put it there. And I'm going to get paid for um, the porta potties and the program. So $750. And I'm just going to put porta potties and program. And, and I don't have to go into too much detail here because over on my activity expenses, we've changed that to who the. Um, the porta potties was to Kerplunk and the patches was to ABC patch supply. And this was program supplies was, was at Costco. I don't know what it was, but anyway, just to show you. So there's corresponding information across there, but we just want to have an expense description to line it up with. And then whoever else submitted the other um, couple hundred dollars in items, um, we would fill that in for them too. Um, so like Mickey Mouse, um, they need a check for the uh, the patches. Oops, and that was one hundred twenty five dollars. So this should equal, you know, what our total expenses were on there. And then, like I said, we'll get this. There's eight hundred seventy five dollars. I'm missing something. Oh, food. Um, um, but uh, anyway, get the, get this to your district executive, and then the field service, and then they'll get you the money um, turned around pretty quick. And Tina, just to help clarify too on this, um, you know, if it's if it's a purchase order, you know, in this particular case, this is a check request, and we'll talk more about this in the procedures video. But uh, for a purchase order, really and truly, what you're doing is you're you're asking for permission to go and expend money, and and you do that beforehand, and receiving that purchase order number back is the way for you as anybody uh, to feel safe that the council is going to repay you for any money that you spend. If you don't ask for the purchase order on the front end, you kind of do run a question mark or risk of wondering, am I gonna get repaid? In most councils, in the most cases, the council is gonna really truly repay you. But if it's something that you're questioning, and if you've done it before and all that, hey, look, I, I wouldn't rule anything out. I would make sure that you always ask for permission on the front end to expend money so that you can get guarantee and knowledge that you have the ability to get repaid. So um, so that's, I think, just a really an, an important note that goes along with this. So. Yeah, I, I like that point too, because, you know, there have been activities where somebody's went out and purchased something that was not in the budget. Um, I don't know how we're going to pay for this uh, $600 widget that, that they went and purchased. And um, so, you know, they didn't, they didn't get a purchase order. They didn't inform us that they were doing it till the day of the activity. And now we got to come up with that. Well, because it wasn't a pre-approved expense, you know, then there'd be other discussions to be had, but a purchase order would have helped in that case. Yeah, safe practice for everybody is just to always say, 
if you plan on spending money, you must have a purchase order first. Great. Yep. And you can do that simply on here. Just select purchase order and send it ahead of time. Yeah. All right. The last one we just want to cover real briefly is the uh, uh, in-kind donations. Um, we'll talk more about these in the procedures video like we discussed, but this is the form that will correspond to that. This is really a, an, an important form to fill out uh, if you are getting donations from like um, uh, we, we have a, a gentleman who always seems to provide us with prizes for our camperies. So uh, we we if he were not able to provide us a prize, let's say for the fall campery, we would have to go out and buy those. Well, by filling out this in-kind um, form, in-kind donation form, we also, you know, we know and we capture how much money he spent on prizes so we can factor that into our budget. Even though it's being paid paid basically by him, we, we can still account for it. So it's really important that you capture that. It also ensures that they will receive a donor receipt um, at at the end of the year from the accounting department at council um, on there. Anything else to add real briefly on that? You know, I think the important part on the on gifts and kind is is you know sometimes we have an activity and somebody has donated something year after year for that activity. This is that form to help make sure that you put acknowledge in it. Um, granted the activity summary helps with that too. Um, but if you're putting it in on this sheet and acknowledging that that you had a gift in kind, then people have the ability to make sure that they go back and ask for that person to help support again the following year. Because if you don't acknowledge it one year, you've got a different chair for the next year, then what really happens is um, now all of a sudden the next year somebody's paying for it because they didn't know that they could go get it for free somewhere else. And in the long run, if they wind up paying for it, then that's going to take the activity fee for the event and cause it to go up in price in the long run. So, which is, of course, what we're trying to avoid in this situation is, is, uh, you know, causing prices the next year to go up. So. Oh, great point. Yeah. So that is basically the uh, activity workbook. Um, here, you know, like we said, if you have any questions, uh, get with Pat or myself or your district executive and they can facilitate it too. But we're, we're happy to help you and we want to make this easy for you to use. And even those that don't use Excel and um, hopefully uh, it'll help you out with your budgeting process come the end of the year. Uh, like I said, I know it helped mine. So, so we're just uh, wanting to help you out there too. All right, well, let me stop the screen share and I think we are about done. Hey, Tina, this was awesome. I really appreciate you putting this together. Um, I know you've a little, little bit of trials going through it and, and making sure you used it, uh, but it, it's been really successful and helpful for you guys in Mountain Valley District. And hence the reason why uh, we share it across the board for everybody now, because um, it just helps us be a little bit more organized helps volunteers and uh, that are out there doing these activities uh, know what happened the prior year, but also know even more importantly that they've got a budget, how and where they can spend money. And it also gives them the, the safety of, of understanding that they can get repaid for the expenses that they they incur. So, um, but great job in this, really good job. Thanks. So grateful that you're doing it, um, that you've put this together and leading the charge for us. So. Uh, Tina, any other last statements or thoughts on this? No, not really. Just uh, use it and uh, we welcome feedback too. I guess we should say that. You know, if you got suggestions that'll make it better, uh, please send them to us too. Sounds great. Um, okay. You know, in general, questions for this, if you really need to send a question in for this or anything else in scouting related to Montana Council, feel free to send an email to info at montanabsa.org and we'll get with you and uh, that'll be uh, coming out. So thank you everybody. Feel free to reach out with any questions. Make it thank a great you. scouting day.